I first wanted to introduce um, our sales rep. I work for Fuji. I'm the marketing director at Fuji Bicycles. Um, as uh, Dave said before, I was a professional bike racer for 15 years. I've worked at Fuji for the last four years. Um, and I wanted to introduce two other Fuji people, Mark McCormick. He's around somewhere. He's our uh, sales rep in the area. If you have any sales questions for Mark, he's the guy. I work, I work back in Philadelphia. I came and then my good friend Sue McDonough, who's from Maine, uh, she and I raced together for years and years, and we've done a lot of women's clinics together. And um, so I'm gonna, I asked her to join and help field some questions as well. And I'm not gonna talk very long, so if you have anything specifically you'd like me to, to talk about, now's the time. But I did wanna, um, Dave asked me to talk about sort of the difference or the reasons why women's specific product is um, is even out there, is even good, and. I wanted to say that the, um, when I was racing, we didn't really have them in specific product. We weren't lucky enough to have it. We, we sort of got whatever bike was given to us or bought whatever bike, um, with a race bike at the time, and then just had to modify it. So we, had, we didn't have the benefit that you have now of having sort of things specifically tailored to fit women's bodies. Um, and to that point, I, when I first got to Fiji and having come from a racing background, I never really thought, I thought it was a marketing gimmick. I thought, you know, women's specific product, come on, I raced, you know, I, I rode on, they fit, I made them work, it was great, you know, what are you talking about? But um, the more research I did, the more I found out that there really is a difference between men and women. There really is a difference between <laughs> women's bodies and men's bodies, and uh, the bike industry has finally sort of uh, come around and, and realized that. So some of the different specific things between sort of your standard, say, bike and a women's specific model bike are specifically aimed toward making it comfortable for you to ride. If you're comfortable on the bike, all sorts of great things happen. Um, you're more efficient, you're, you're in less pain, obviously, you're having more fun, you're, uh, you fatigue less. So all the things that bike manufacturers do to make the bike women specific are all aimed at making you more comfortable, so you want to ride the bike more. I know a lot of people, I mean, you know, I, I can do it. <laughs> well, there's that, but I mean, there's there's some reasons you end up not riding your bike, and for me, a lot of times it was um, saddle issues. So, so that is one thing, and I am very very happy to say that um, there are now women-specific saddles. They're not all the same. I can't really say that there's one that's best for everybody, but at least there are different um, shapes and sizes to fit different women's anatomies. Um, some of the things that are pretty common to them are. Uh, oftentimes there's wider, a little bit wider, and I'm, I'm not talking like big cushy, whatever, I mean it could be, but a little bit wider because women have wider hips and um, most women, although not myself, sit on that part, they're called the sit bones. So they make a lot of um, women's saddles a little bit wider here. They also have like a, a narrower or like a built-in channel in the middle. Sometimes you actually see the cutout, sometimes you don't, sometimes it's just hidden underneath. But that just allows your sort of soft tissue area to have a little bit more cushion. Um, and a lot of times the noses are shorter because there's just, it's just the way we're built. We're not we're sitting back on the sit bone, so you don't really need that front part of the thing. I personally like um, triathlon saddles, which are a little bit wider in the nose. For me, because I, I don't really sit on my sit bones, I lean forward a little bit more, and I'm not a triathlete, but that's just my style of riding. So that kind of saddle works for me too. So that that really made a big difference to me and, and kept me on my bike a lot longer, those kinds of things. Um, the other thing is, and this I didn't believe, I had to be convinced of this, but women have narrower shoulders. And I was a swimmer when I was growing up, so I've always had very wide shoulders, and I thought, yeah, come on. But um, my sales manager has, statistically pro proved it to me. There's statistics to show that women, in general, 90% of women have narrow shoulders than men. They don't have the musculature that men have, so they have narrow shoulders. So a lot of women's bikes come with and or are available with uh, narrower handlebars. So you're not you know, out here in a very uncomfortable position. You can actually come straight down and be a lot more comfortable and put your arms in a, a more comfortable position. Um, manufacturers also now make the brake levers closer or smaller for smaller hands, or not as strong hands in some cases. There's that. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, the uh, cranks oftentimes are shorter, just the crank arms being this part, so you got a, a little more efficiency um, because you're turning the pedals over a little faster. You don't have that long crank arm to go around. Um, oftentimes, 
you know, for taller riders, they want longer cranks to sort of match the length of their leg, but for women who tend to be a little bit smaller, they want shorter cranks. That wasn't an option for a long time ago. Um, the geometry of the bike, so that means the actual sort of way the tubes fit together and the actual, um, when you get on the bike, the geometry sort of sets the tone for how you are positioned on the bike. You can make adjustments, you can raise the saddle, you can shorten the stem or lengthen the stem or raise the stem, you can always make those adjustments, um, but the, the built-in geometry, so the height of this, the length of this, and the length of this, are things that um, we had to, in the past, adjust for by doing all those, all those, minute, all those adjustments that were, weren't minute, they're minute now, but back then it was really, you had to just make huge adjustments and, you know, jerry rig the thing a lot of times. But um, in general, women have a shorter reach than men. Um, this is explained to me because men have more musculature here, so they have more length when they do put their arms out eventually. So women don't have as much shoulder, smaller collarbones, smaller shoulders, so they have a smaller reach. Um, and I know, I would assume, and I know from my past experience, if I'm not set on a bike correctly this way, it's easy to get um, back pain here or upper arm pain back here. So that, if you're having that right now, that's an issue, and, and you should know that they can be corrected pretty easily by getting a shorter setup. Um, that's really, those are, they're called the touch points, and that's really the, the points in the bike where a lot of manufacturers have made differences. So, um, because this doesn't do anything. That's where we are. Um, because every bike there, I know all right, Dave also wanted me to talk about some of the beyond the bike products that um, make your ride more enjoyable. And I was speaking earlier to someone about how um, getting the right clothing, of course, is going to make your ride a lot more enjoyable. When I first started, started to ride, I rode in sneakers and running shorts. Really, really. I didn't know any better. <laughs> um, and a friend, of course, convinced me to get a shabby Laker shorts with a shabby look. And it made all the difference. So I wanted to uh, encourage you, if you haven't, try. Um, and they don't have to be lycra. You know, some kind of padded short. Believe me, you're going to be a lot happier. I don't know. I talked to quite a few people. It sounds like a lot of people are going on longer rides, um, like MS-150 rides. Or um, just take it from me. Invest in a pair of shorts for the time. Much better. What else? Thank <laughs> you. 